So everyone, this is what we're creating today. And if you're wondering why I'm coming up with all these vibrant color combinations, here is the reason. Spring has sprung with all of these amazing purples and pinks, and you can't help but incorporate these colors into your color palette as you're creating. And please stay tuned. I have several really good tips on creating on this type of jar lid, and I will also have some news about the giveaway near the end. Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKeever, and welcome to my channel. First and foremost, thank you to all the subscribers, all my subscribers. I really appreciate all your support. And if you're new here, please, I hope you consider joining with us. Um, today, I haven't done a jar lid. Well, I might have done a jar lid by now, but a different format. But I haven't done one of these glass jar lids in a little while. So I happen to have one sitting on the shelf. I happen to have all these colors from a coaster palette that I just did available and I figured I might as well use up these paints. So I'm going to be doing this in probably two clocks today using this color palette and let's just get started. I'll call out the colors as I go. In my usual fashion I try not to waste any time because everybody's time is very valuable. So this is my multi-pro. It's 47-3110. I'm going to give this guy a little whirl, kind of get it started. Now my colors, I've got Prism Pores Violet Rose with Artist Loft's Metallic Purple. Oops, I just put it in, I just put that right into the paint. <laughs> but that's okay, it's all going to spin out. And I'm going to actually use that color twice. And there's a little bit of golden black in there. This is Amsterdam's uh, Persian Rose with a little bit of pearl white from Amsterdam in there. This is Arteza's Pearl Lime Green, and that's all I've got in this one. If you know me by now, you know I usually and often will combine colors together because I'm, I'm one of these team players. <laughs> Literally, I think that you know, putting things together is always a good thing. This is TLP's Agapanthus. I only just used this for the first time yesterday. And I think that this color goes really well with that other purple that I just put down. This is Agapanthus and uh, Artist's Loft Light Violet. This is back to that purple combination again. And these two colors, like I say, just really complement and work with each other and this purple is so thick I even thinned it down but I think I need to I think I need to give a little bit more spritz of water here so now I've got my gold combination this is 24 karat gold by deco art and iridescent gold by golden if you followed me you know that I like these these, this color combination because you get the bling of the 24 karat and you got the nice subtle beauty of the um, golden's iridescent gold. And this here is Arteza's Cadmium Green Oxide. With a little bit of golden's black. And some a little bit of Arteza Sky Blue in here. I've got a lot of paint. This is a little tiny jar lid. Look at the paint's already going over the edge. Okay, so now my uh, cell activator. Yeah, that's a lot of paint. Got my... Um, I'm going to do it backwards today. I'm going to put the, put the pearl... I'm sorry... This is the same color as the Persian Rose that's down there, but this is Cell Activator. Put a little dab of that on first, and then we'll put the Titanium White. My American Floatrol Cell Activator Video 141. I'll link it above if you want to take a look at that, how I make it. That's the Titanium White. So I always like to talk through the blowout, and if you have a good set of lungs, you probably can push this out in one blow because this jar lid is so small. But either way, for this one, I blew straight down into the cell activator to blow the cell activator as much out into a circle as possible. And where that little ridge is formed, I blow 
straight at that ridge, which blows the cell activator out over the paints and then the paints out over the pillow. I'm gonna lose a lot of my beautiful color on this. Paints are a little thick today. I'm going to lose my green. I'll see what we get here. Yeah, see this is what happens if you put down too much paint you end up losing your composition because that paint that maybe started out beautiful on the sides will flow right off the edge and, be, and disappear forever. That's why it kills me when I see people see some of the YouTubers putting down just what seems like a gallon of paint and like, you know that you're not gonna be able to keep that. And then you waste all the paint. So it's kind of like a double whammy. I think I put too much cell activator down. Clean up. These jar lids are so easy to make. They're so fun. And they're great for gifts. Or they're great for around the house. A pantry for storing things. The bathroom for putting in your Q-tips or your, your cotton balls or whatever you might need. They're really, really useful and fun. And great way to test color palettes. I think we're almost done. Now I'm going to double check to make sure that that little groove there, that little hourglass shape, I've got paint all in there because there's been times before where the paint will kind of just go flat over it and then as it dries, it just kind of leaves a bubble. Then when you go to resin it, you got a problem. So you just kind of blow in there with the straw. to make sure that you've got it pushed all the way in. Yep, see there's a bubble right there. I know you can't see it, but I do. There it goes. That's what I'm talking about, right there. See how that popped? Gotta make sure you get those out. And now I'll just spin it a little more and get, get it off. But yeah, you can see. As you're uh, Oh my God, I got paint in my mouth. Oh my gosh. Excuse me for a minute, please. It's a good idea if you don't put your paint down, your, your straw down right into paint. So there we go. Now, that was a beautiful learning, learning objective right there. So I think, oh, let me get this filled in. So if you've seen me make my ornaments, I would do that as well. I would be blowing in underneath to get into the little grooves and gaps. I think we've got it. And then if you have a bubble that leaves it back, it leaves it open to the glass, just blow from the sides to push the paint in and have it just kind of heal itself and then give it a couple spins and you won't even know anything ever happened. There's all kinds of little all kinds of little cheats in this game. I think I think we're about done. Let me give it a quick wipe 
quick wipe on the bottom. Maybe one little more spin. we'll call this guy done. Now, the trick is always lifting this thing because it's so small and you don't want to tip it over. So let me just grab underneath here. And there we go. One little jar lid done. Somebody asked me about the underside of the lid. So I'm just gonna show you. So, before I resin, before I paint, I tape around here and I have all this covered. So all the way up to here is taped. And then after I get done doing the resin, I actually use an X-Acto knife, use my take the tape off, take the paper I have in the middle, and then I exacto knife around to help me pull up the tape. So I end up with a nice, fairly straight line here. I'm not worried about it being perfect because this grommet seals it up and covers it up. And then what I do, actually, another tip, what I do right before I put the final grommet on is I put a little bit of, um, varnish around the edges here just to seal it on because you know that I've been using that varnish like glue and it seals it on there and then there you go get the grommet back on there and if you look at it like that you you, you don't see any imperfections and then once you get it on and installed That's what it looks like. It looks nice. Put your favorite thing inside and you're good to go. So that's all I do. Now it took me a while to get to the point to know that to use this. Cleaning off the tape is not the easiest thing. So I just use the X-Acto blade with a little heat gun on it and it comes out pretty nicely. You just gotta be steady with your hand. This is very sharp. You don't wanna slice yourself. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys before we go to the final end. Well, hey, since we're here, here's the final the final piece. <laughs> and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think I'll just do a little flyover as well. Okay, I'll be back in a second. So everyone, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new, please subscribe and hit the bell and all. You'll get all my latest art tutorials. A little news about the giveaway. Since I had such a great response and you guys have been so awesome, I've decided to give away one jar lid as well as the coaster set and paints. So stay tuned for the next video. I'll be drawing the winners, and the first person pick will get the first choice. Second person pick get the second choice, and, and the third person, well, you just get what's left. Hopefully all good. Until next time, everybody, take care.